Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Perrin, and I'm a junior at Bowdoin College, which is in Maine. Uh, before I start, I just want to acknowledge that, yes, my project is called Operation Dark Sky. When we learned that we were going to be helping with this night sky project, we just could not help ourselves, and it stuck. So my project is related to Sky Island Alliance's border wildlife study and the vegetation surveys that you just heard about from Walton Benjamin. But I specifically focused on night sky quality along the border to see how light pollution affects wildlife in the area. So to survey the night sky, 23 community scientists, um, probably many of you, actually went to the border at night to collect dark sky data. And SIA wanted to know, one, how does artificial light affect wildlife and where is nocturnal wildlife active? Two, what is the current light pollution situation along the border? And three, how can preserving dark skies contribute to our conservation goals? Um, so to answer these questions, SIA set up a study that ran for 84 miles of border between the border cities of Nogales to the west and Douglas to the east. You can see the border wildlife study area with the purple box in, on this slide um, with the Patagonia Mountains to the west, the San Rafael Valley in the middle, the Huachuca Mountains, and then that's the San Pedro River even further to the east. So a dark night sky is a really important aspect of the Sky Island wildlife habitat for several reasons. Um, the San Pedro River, which runs straight through our study area, is the last undammed river of the southwest, and it is a really important for the migration of 300 bird species, 200 butterfly species, and 20 bat species. Um, and bat feeding, pollination, and migration behaviors can all be impacted by artificial light. And light pollution can also impact predator prey dynamics. So one study actually showed how pumas in the southwest changed their hunting behaviors based on artificial light. Um, and this area is also just generally important because of the presence of over 40 endangered species, including the jaguar, ocelot, and Mexican gray wolf. So in the past year's worth of border wildlife study data, we saw proof of these high levels of nocturnal mammal activity. Um, over 50% of all mammal captures on the, in the wildlife study were at night between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. And in some blocks, it was as high as 70%, like in, here in block 13. And out of the nocturnal mammals most commonly seen on border wildlife study cameras, most activity happened in the Patagonia and Huachuca Mountains. Um, so you can see here that there are a lot of gray fox sightings in blocks 11 and 15 in green, and a lot of black-tailed jackrabbits in block 10 in red, in block 15 in red. And then out of the nocturnal mammals that were least commonly captured, so more of the rarer animals, um, the same trend happens with most activity in the mountains. And you can see lots of ringtails here, which is awesome in block 15 in blue, and mountain lions in block 10 in purple. Um, I also thought that the badger activity, which you see in orange in the middle, in the San Rafael Valley is interesting, showing that the grasslands are actually also a really important habitat for some animals. So considering how important nighttime is for animals, we went to survey how dark these borderlands really are. And SIA organized groups of community scientists like many of you to visit the border at night and to take sky quality measurements. This happened just several weeks ago, actually, between April 3rd and April 12th. So SIA also collaborated with an organization called Globe at Night that collects dark sky data from around the world. So our data contributed to tens of thousands of points collected each year, which is really cool. Um, and here's what our data collection nights looked like. For many points, we drove or walked along the border to reach the points. And in our survey in block 10, the closest to Nogales, we actually walked to the end of the border construction road um, and this was really striking and really sad to see this, the huge amount of destruction caused by this six lane wide border road that was just cutting straight through the mountains. And we saw the end where it was all bulldozed. Um, so when we got to each point, then we took a darkness measurement with a sky quality meter or SQM. And our SQM measurements ranged from over 21, which indicates a really dark sky over here to as low as 17, which you would find more in urban areas with more artificial light. So this map shows where the 66 SQM measurements were taken along the border. 
And we encountered two different types of light pollution. One is from newly installed floodlights along the border wall that are intended to deter migrants. Um, and the other is just general light pollution from nearby population centers. This map shows the locations of where these floodlights are. So there are two over here near Nogales, stadium lighting. And then there's three in the middle here. And then further to the east by Douglas, there are points that had border lights installed, but they were not turned on when we surveyed them. Oh, and another important note is that the border wildlife study area is all doesn't ha not have any lighting on it. So um, this map shows the light pollution resulting from both light pollution sources, both the cities and the border lights. Um, and the colors of the dots correspond with our SQM measurements with the dark blue being the darkest points and the yellow being the brightest. And you can see that all points in the border wildlife study are over 21 magnitudes per square arc second, which is just the fancy unit that they use, um, which is really dark and that's awesome. And the size of the black circles on this map indicates population size. So you can see that sky quality is generally worse near population centers like Nogales and Douglas. Um, and then again, those points in the middle are uh, worse sky quality due to border lights like actually installed on the wall. So once we had collected and analyzed all of this data, I was curious about where dark skies are most important for wildlife. Um, so I created a wildlife habitat quality index that incorporated several things. One, the type of border barrier present, so whether there's a wall or not. Two, whether border lights were on and three, if the SQM measurement at that point was over 21 or not, and then four, the amount of wildlife activity in that particular area. And then I assigned points for each of these factors and added them up to give each point a habitat quality value. So for example, the lowest score a point could have is zero, which means that there's a 30 foot border wall there with floodlights. The SQM measurement was less than 21 and it was not in the border wildlife study area. So you can see some dark red points near Nogales and in the middle. Um, and then the dark green points have the highest habitat quality, which means lots of wildlife is there and there's no wall or border lighting present and the SQM was over 21. And you can see that's mostly in our border wildlife study area. So where do we go from here? Um, the International Dark Sky Association accepts applications for certain areas to be officially designated as dark sky refuges. Um, and their qualifications for this designation include having SQM measurements consistently over 21.2, which means that a large section of our study area actually qualifies. Um, so this would be the area that I would recommend designating as a dark sky refuge based on my wildlife quality index. Um, it includes the Patagonia Wildlife Corridor, the Huachuca Wildlife Corridor, and the San Pedro River Migratory Corridor. And this is really exciting because it would add a layer of protection to these really important migration corridors and also could prevent further wall construction that would really degrade wildlife habitat. Um, thank you so much to all the community scientists who collected the data for this really important project. And I encourage all of you to collect this important data through SIA or Globe at Night, wherever you are, um, and also get to see some beautiful skies. <laughs>